Hi, this is Max from Dynamixes. In this video, I will introduce how a new live instance solution. You'll need the version 271 or higher of Performer to create the retargeting profile and the 321 or higher of Grabber to track live. After this tutorial, you should be ready to track and retarget your fashion animation on your 3D character in real time. Unlike Live Pro Workflow, you will not have to annotate frames from the video of your actor beforehand. The software is already pre-trained and has a predefined tracking profile that will track any face instantly. The only work you will need to do is to build retargeting links on your 3D characters of your choice. Make sure that your character has blend shapes and joints compatible for real-time animation. In this tutorial, We'll be preparing your live instant profile, connecting to the bridge, creating your face entity set on controllers, editing your links, exporting your profile for live instant, and then tracking in real time with Grabber. So start Performer Live Instant. Select Create a new Performer project. Name your project and click on Create. If you hold the Performer SV or MV version, a Performer version that can be used with real-time, you will have to select Live Instant Project under Camera Configuration drop-down menu in the first window. You'll access to a second screen with predefined poses of our friend Rombot. You'll have to retarget these key poses to your own 3D character. To do so, you'll need to connect to your 3D software. Maya in this tutorial with the bridge plugin and create a retargeting profile. To check if the Dynamics bridge plugin has been installed in Maya, go to Windows, Setting Preferences and Plugin Manager. You will see in the list of installed plugins. Look for DXYZ Bridge. Make sure you checked Loaded and Autoload boxes. Loaded to load the plugin for this session and autoload to load it automatically every time you will open the software. Click on Close. Once it's done, we will jump to the Maya script editor, just right here, to type the command DXYZ Bridge with a capital B in mail session. It will open the Dynamics Bridge window. Click on Start. Go to the Studio section in Performer and click on Connect. Performer will analyze the content of your 3D scene. If you are successfully connected to the bridge, the name of the 3D software and project location should appear right here. Just a small tip to save your script and connect to your 3D software quicker. Open the script edition window by clicking on this icon. Enter the DXYZ bridge with the capital B. Click on the icon here to save the script to the shelf. Enter a name for it and it will appear in the shelf with other shortcuts. Now you'll have to create a face entity set. A face entity set is a list of entities you want to animate on your character. Usually, it is easier to create a first entity set with the controllers. Click on Create under Face Entity Set in the Studio section in the Session mode. Our retargeter splits the face in three different zones, which we can call solvers. The lower solver, the upper solver, and the gay solver. The upper zone will animate the forehead, eyebrows, and eyelids. The lower zone will focus on the lip sync area. You just have to select in the scene the controllers that you want to import to your entity set and assign a solver to them in Performer. You'll see two identical columns in the Entity Set Creation window. One is entitled Scene Selection and the other one Table Selection. It depends upon the context you choose to interact with. To assign a selected controller from the Scene or Viewport, I click on Assign to Upper Solver in the Scene Selection column. All the names of the controllers now appear in the list here. You can now choose any controllers from that list and use the button of the table selection column to reassign it in a different solver if you realize you made a mistake. 
I will now select all my other controllers that are included in the lower solver and assign them accordingly in the scene selection. You can also remove any entity from the selection, either from the scene or from the table by clicking on the Removed from Selection button. Now we have to name our entity set. I will name it Robot Control. Click on Create. The name of my entity set just appeared in the Face Entity Set window. The Face Entity Set is a list of elements I will edit in the retargeting process. Here you see that empty face shapes have appeared on the predefined pose of Rombot, that means that the frames have not been linked to the character yet. We will do that by editing some retargeting links for each of our frames. Now we will retarget each of Rombot's pose to our own 3D character. We will try to match the most accurately as possible to Rombot's expressions. Click on the preview of the neutral pose of Rombot. It is pretty simple. Closed lips, gaze looking straight, neutral expression. Press save and you'll see the mask icon in the frame is getting colored. Training purposes are frozen since for the neutral pose, you must save all the controllers for every solver. For the next pose, I'll work on the eyebrows. For this pose, I can decide to take into account a particular solver, lower, gaze or upper. You can retarget up to 55 poses. We recommend to retarget at least 20 poses to get a decent result. I can use shortcuts icons to get quicker. For this new frame I've selected, I can decide to start with the neutral pose of my character by clicking on the mask here with the N. If an expression in the zone or solver of Rombot is similar to another frame, I can copy retarget links I already created and pass them depending upon the solver. I am looking at these two frames. I think that these two mouth expressions look very close to each other. I'll get to this expression in first frame. Click on this icon to copy the lower solver and pass it to my second frame. I do the work in Performer and see the result in Maya. Now that I retargeted each pose properly, I'm done with the retargeting on controllers. Remember that the FBX controllers will not be imported in the 3D engine. So now I need to create another face entity set based on blend shapes in Performer. I'll go ahead and display the blend shapes in Maya. I'll go to the Animation Editor and Shape Editor. I'll select my blend shape name, right-click on it and click on Select Blend Shape Node. I'll assign all my blend shapes to the lower solver and then reassign them properly to their dedicated solver. In this configuration, you can also select the joints. I'll name this second face entity set Blend Shapes and Joints. Once this is done, we need to transfer the retargeting links we've created with the first face entity set with the second one. To do so, select the first entity set. Mine is called Robot Control. Click on Create Link Scene in the toolbar. It will export retargeting links as animated keyframe in your Maya time slider. Select your second face entity set, Robot, Blend Shapes and Joints. Then click on Import Link Scene. A window pops up with different options. We want to copy the exact same configuration of the original face entity set. Check the first box override the solver from an existing face entity set. The latest face entity set should be already selected. Click on OK. I'll check my retargeting links have been transferred properly to my profile with blend shapes and joints. The links you created will be transferred to your live instant profile. You now need to export the profile so that you can use it as a project in Grabber. Go to the Profile section in the menu and select Export Live Instant Profile. Select your destination folder. 
Here I'm going to create a new one. Select the profile with the links edited towards blend shapes and joins. Click on export. It has just created a file with the ESC extension that you'll need to upload in the software grabber to track in real time. Start grabber. Select Load Live Instant in the Tracking section of the menu. A new window will pop up requesting you open your Live Instant project. Browse the directory and open the ESC extension file you've just created. A second window asks you to select your operational mode. Choose between the Freehead or HMC setup, whether you're using a webcam or a head-mounted camera to track. I choose the freehead as I'm using a webcam. Select the single camera layout and select the relevant device, in my case, my webcam, with the right video mode according to the number of frames per second I want to track. Click on the live tracking button to start the tracking in real time. You should see white lines tracking your face on the preview. For now, you can animate your character in the 3D real-time engine. To learn about how to set up your character in Unity or Unreal for live animation, do not hesitate to jump to the designated tutorial in our tutorial list. Feel free to share with us your feedbacks. If you're looking for more accuracy in the live fashion animation results regarding a specific performance, we recommend you to test our Live Pro solution. Live Pro enables you to train the software to a specific set of expression of one actor, creating a dedicated tracking profile. To do so, please refer to our previous tutorial, creating a tracking and retargeting profiles, prepare your file for real-time and live stream in Unreal or Unity.